comic book fans, and welcome to Cammy's Comic Corner. Let me first start off by saying t this week was a huge week for comic books. Marvel especially. They had tons of you know, top titles out all at the same time, and uh, met most of them were Secret Invasion titles. But after reading through all my Marvel, DC, Image, what have you, I only decided that one stood out from all the rest. And that is Young Avengers Presents Hawkeye, number six, written by Matt Fraction and art by Alan Davis. For the past six issues, each Young Avenger has had a spotlight. And on this certain issue, this last final issue, we look at Kate Bishop, a.k.a. Hawkeye. Now, she originally got the bow from Captain America after Hawkeye, Clint Barton's death. Or so we thought he was dead. But we start off with this issue finding out that uh, Ronan, a.k.a. Clint Barton, a.k.a. the original Hawkeye, is alive and well as he crashes Eli, a.k.a. the Patriot, and Kate, a.k.a. Hawkeye's date in Central Park. He, he fights her a little bit, and he, she knows throughout the entire time that he is testing her and seeing how good she is to, you know, have the Hawkeye mantle. Afterwards, he gives, hands her his card, says, come meet me at the Avengers little secret hideout, and we'll talk later. As we follow Kate to the new Avengers hideout, we find out that Clint is offering an archery contest, and where if he can split the arrow in twain right down the middle, she has to hand over the bow and the Hawkeye mantle. And what's he doing this with? He's just doing it with a cheap-ass bow that he got at the local uh, sporting goods store. Kate says, you know, it, I saw this on Mythbusters. It, it can't be done. And I saw that same Mythbusters episode, so believe me, if they can't do it, no one can. But this isn't no one. This is Hawkeye. Even though he's been a Ronin for the past year, I think he still has that little Hawkeye magic running in his fingers. Turns out he does. So this kind of pisses off Kate because now she's an embarrassment. She's lost the Hawkeye name. She's lost the Hawkeye bow. She's a nothing now. After her teammates find out, Eli and her have a little spat. And she decides, you know what, I'm just going to rub this in Eli's face and go out with Speed, one of the newest members to their group. So while they're out and about, they say, why not? Hey, why don't we just go get your bow back? You know, they're not going to know it. And sure enough, new Avengers are off fighting crime. They sneak in. She retrieves the bow and goes back. Well, while she's there, though, Hawkeye and Luke Cage come back from a fight, and they talk about how they would like to, you know, just mentor the new event or the the young Avengers, not sponsor them or back them or anything, but you know, if they need they need help or guidance, they'd be the perfect group to do so. Later on in the shadows, Hawkeye returns and he says, "Hey, cute little stunt you pulled, but you know what? You deserve it. You deserve the bow. You deserve the name, and I'm proud to know that you are taking up the Hawkeye mantle." I thought it was a very brilliantly written issue, the art was very nice, but the whole overall story of how, you know, Hawkeye is going to play a big part on the Young Avengers. Now, on to the Fast Five. First up from Marvel, we have Daredevil number 108. And in this issue, we follow Big Ben Donovan as he's on death row, about to be sentenced. He says, no. I want to die. I killed these three kids. Daredevil doesn't believe it. Especially after Dakota North, the private investigator who handed the case off to Matt, says, You know what? Something's fishy here. Turns out an FBI agent is behind the beating that she got in the parking lot. So she thinks something's up and it, you know, she should dig a little deeper. While well, Daredevil also knows something's up and he continues on with the case. Next up from DC, we have Green Lantern number 32. We follow Hector Hammond and find out how he got the cosmic radiation and how it affected his mind and how he's hearing people's thoughts. Meanwhile, Sinestro and Hal Jordan meet for the very first time and it's pretty much a mid-air collision. Hal's just going on in this jet, Sinestro just tears it apart says, you should be flying with your ring. What's wrong with you, stupid terrestrial Terran, whatever you call yourself? And a little showdown goes off, Sinestro's not, not, uh, not impressed by Hal Jordan's skill and pulls a little Yoda on him, where he reassembles the entire plane, showing how much willpower does play into the ring. Very fun issue, and now looks like Hal might need Sinestro's help in the next issue, as Hector Hammond has gone batshit insane. Next up from Marvel, we have Miss Marvel number 28. It's a secret invasion tie-in, and all we do is, is follow Miss Marvel as she's 
had in the previous issues, she's just been going through hell. Lost a boyfriend. She's kind of frantic, so she has an affair with uh, Wonder Man. And in this issue, she just just comes one with herself and kicks a lot of scroll ass. Let me tell you, if you like hot women in spandex just killing things left and right, you should pick up this issue. That's all she does throughout the entire issue. And then at the end, a real challenge. A big Goliath-sized scroll. Can she kill him? Let's find out. Next up from DC, we have Final Crisis number two. When Final Crisis number one came out, I wasn't all that thrilled. But number two, it's kind of kind of got me a little bit interested. In the beginning, we find we follow Sonny Sumo as he encounters Mr. Miracle on Earth in his in his um, human body. He's no longer a god. All the new gods have fallen to Earth, and they're among us in terrestrial Terran skin. There, there I go again with the terrestrial Terran. Whatever. We also find out in this issue that Hal Jordan is set up from injuring Jon Stewart. Uh, an Alpha Lantern did that. And it turns out she might be a part of the Dark Side Club. Meanwhile, Batman is kidnapped by said Alpha Lantern. And the whole issue ends with the return of a very special Flash. We got Jay, we got Wally. And now it's the return of Barry Allen. Almost a fan favorite among everyone I know. And finally this week we have Secret Invasion Presents... Young Avengers Runaways number one. Or is it Runaways Young Avengers number one? Either way, they're both together, and finally, something that they can both be a part of. Because the last run Runaways Young Avengers crossover was back in Civil War, and let's just say, four issues of just horseshit. Didn't have anything to do with Civil War. But in the first uh, issue of this one so far, it has something to do with Secret Invasion. And seeing how Zaven is on the run Runaways team, and Hulkling is on the Young Avengers team. So there's a lot of scroll battling going on, and there's two more issues left. I think I'll uh, stick with it. Well, that does it for Kame's Comic Corner this week. If you want to be our friend, go to myspace.com slash Kame's Comic Corner. There you can click underneath that banner and subscribe to the RSS feed, and subscribe to us on iTunes. If you want to uh, send me an email, send it to Kame's Comic Corner at gmail.com. Well, that's it for comics this week. If you're a big Marvel fan, it was a huge week for you. And I've been Cammy. I've been your host. Have a good week. Yeah.